the Center for U.S. Global Engagement launched our effort. It's called Impact 08, Building a Better, Safer World. I'd like to see the next president really talk about the use of smart power, and that is the integration of not only defense, but along with the, the importance of global development and diplomacy as an integral part of our national security and foreign policy. I'm uh, pleased to tell you, as you probably already know, that both of the uh, national nominees for the Democrat and Republican are, are candidates that have talked about these issues and their platforms address this issue. Uh, last week in Denver, we co-hosted an event to hear the Obama senior foreign policy team, and we're delighted to thrill today to uh, hear some of the surrogates and advisors to Senator McCain talk about these very same issues. Senator Obama assured the nation that he was uh, being advised by a world-class foreign policy team. What you have before you today is the real cream of the crop. We need to integrate uh, the various aspects of American power and influence. Uh, our military power, our diplomatic power, our moral authority, our, our economic power, all of them and bring them together. I heard for the first time a presidential candidate say not only do we have to double foreign assistance, which has not always been popular in the past, and we have to build up the Peace Corps, but we have to build up the U.S. Foreign Service. Military issues are framed by your approach to uh, preventive steps that diminish the need to use military force. Uh, national security isn't just about the Department of Defense. Senator Obama would double our foreign aid program or to strengthen our State Department in the way that Tony Lake has talked about. Uh, those kinds of efforts contribute to the prevention of problems and are fundamental to relieving the burdens of our military. I had the opportunity to go to the southern Philippines and visit um, with some of our Special Forces soldiers down there, and, and they are not firing a shot. They are training some of the locals to deal with that, but they are also digging wells and building schools and providing health care because ultimately that is how we will be able to keep violent extremism under control and make the world a safer place. And I know, you know from working with Senator Obama and from working with these fine people on the stage, they are committed to taking that approach. Well, I am grateful for this new organization, the, um, the Center for Global Engagement. It's come at the right time because it's attracting people's attention to precisely the issues that I think are at the heart of selecting the new president of the United States. Senator Obama understands that if we want to deal with terrorism, if we want to fight global poverty, if we want to prevent the spread of global pandemics within our borders, we have to work with every country we can. He also understands the importance of our civilian agencies. He's committed to modernizing those systems so that we can make smart investments, so that we can be capable and we can fire on all cylinders. So Barack Obama has for uh, the duration of this campaign and indeed his whole life in public service understood the rapidly changing nature of the world in which we're living in and the fact that given these transnational challenges climate change uh, <coughs> renewing and, and enhancing and strengthening our partnerships around the world dealing with the challenge of proliferation uh, building our collective global capacity to secure ourselves from uh, not only terrorism but challenges like pandemic disease it can be as or more deadly. Uh, brokering and supporting peace and conflict zones around the world from the Middle East uh, to Africa to South Asia and investing in global poverty reduction and building the capacity of people and states to provide more effectively for their people and for their societies and to govern democratically and re responsibly. All of these are part of an affirmative agenda. Uh, that Senator Obama is powerfully committed to pursuing. I have found it very fascinating as a political journalist to watch this debate shift. As we just heard the business community get on board uh, to say that military means do have to be supplemented by other means in the world. Uh, admirals, generals, the military saying military means are not enough. When this really is an opportunity to get an insight into what he's going, what we're going to be hearing in the fall in the general election, but also how a McCain administration might actually approach these issues. So he's a, he's a very strong believer in, one, the power of I, our ideas, the idea of freedom, two, the importance of economic assistance. 
So um, John's a believer, to use an overused phrase, not only in hard American power, but in soft American power. And so he's going to take a very fresh look at our um, foreign and defense um, institutions, agencies, and I think you can expect a shakeup here. Uh, and that uh, the, the net result of it is that the State Department and USAID and the public diplomacy part of our government will get a lot more centrality and a lot more support in the McCain administration. John McCain understands that there are near-term and long-term ways to cope with the problem posed by radical Islam. But long term, clearly, Senator Lieberman said, we've got to invest in trying to provide a decent education system to where a child can become literate and have some hope of being something other than a terrorist. He understands the profound importance of basic opportunity, of education, of health care, of housing and he intends to make clear in his policies a revamp and overhaul of the State Department and our aid administering agencies so that we do a better job of this and begin to spend more than the pittance that we do right now. It was just not the military power that overcame Al-Qaeda and the Iranian-backed extremists, but a remarkable series of uh, economic incentives to help people develop themselves. Uh, uh, trade is a politically controversial issue these days, but following on with what Senator Lieberman said earlier, uh, it is absolutely an essential part of this soft power arsenal. We have to have it as, um, as a way to break through. Bud talked a little about education and even health care, all of which are important and actually help to develop a country economically. But ultimately, uh, trade is probably the, the single best weapon we have to really reduce poverty. And trade is important by itself, but it also is the canary in the mine shaft that should alert us of the need to engage Beijing, New Delhi, and other countries differently so they become part of the architecture which has served us and other countries so well. I agree with Senator Lieberman this can be the American century, but it can only be if we engage with the rest of the world on a whole range of topics. And I know this organization is working on health and development and, and issues like education. I think you're going to see John McCain utilizing the instruments he has been involved in all over the world in over 90 countries in trying to help civil society and democratic institutions grow. Uh, John McCain has been out front from when Bill Clinton started to increase our assistance on HIV AIDS. Uh, Senator McCain has been a strong supporter of the Millennium Challenge count. He was going to even devote a higher percentage of increased foreign aid on trying to address those questions of education, good governance, and health care. In the last eight years, we've seen progress. I think it's going to be accelerated when John McCain's president.